In this exercise, we will have a look at computations with matrices. And um, the reason why we're doing this is um, because matrices are a great way to represent information. Um, you can imagine matrices as um, yeah, an arrangement of vectors, and vectors are a great way to represent multidimensional information in a numerical way. And um, yeah, if you take multiple vectors as columns, for example, and put them in one matrix, then um, this is actually a great way to do two things. Either you can do batches of vectors, so um, yeah, multiple independent vectors for which you want to do uh, the same computations, or you can do um, or use matrices as maps of vectors to other vectors or maps of batches of vectors to batches of vectors. So still great way to represent information. Why is this useful? Well, for our machine learning applications, we often want the computer to do some computations, to learn some stuff. And we can do this if we have our data represented in a numerical form and our operations in an easy to compute format and matrix are great for this. Especially this will be very useful for neural networks, which we'll do at the very end of the semester, but this will lay the foundations of um, yeah, basically all your future work that you'll be doing throughout your studies with um, deep learning and yeah, neural networks in general. So I want to highlight a specific thing here and uh, this is matrix multiplication, but also transposition. And the task that we are trying to solve will be um, A dot product C transposed. And in order to do this, we will first compute C transposed. And transposition means that we are basically flipping the matrix. So as you can see here, we have a um, two times three matrix. It's always the number of rows before the number of columns. And from this two times three matrix, the transposition creates a three times two matrix. So we know that we're gonna get something like this. And um, yeah, it's basically flipping the role of columns with the role of rows. So all the things that were in the first row here are now in the first column and everything that was in the second row is now in the second column. So what you can do here is you can imagine some kind of symmetry axis that is um, yeah, in a di diagonal fashion like this. So if you were to flip this, flip this over here, then you get the two here, you'd get the zero here, the minus one here, the minus two here, the one here and the five here, and this is our original matrix. So this is just flipping on a diagonal axis, but you can imagine this, this as um, yeah, swapping the role of rows and columns. So now our second step is actually computing this matrix product. And, and this is not trivial because this is not element-wise. So this dot product here is not an element-wise computation uh, or operation or multiplication. It's, um, it's something that yeah, does something different. And you can imagine this as um, a composition of maps that are applied. So, um, yeah, basically, if you consider applying a vector from the right hand onto a matrix as a map, and then applying the vector that you get out of this to another matrix as the second map, um, then you can combine those two maps into one and represent this with a matrix. And this is exactly what you would do with the dot product. 
So it gets a bit more complicated. But nevertheless, we will need this. For example, um, when we do neural networks and when we do um, the um, yeah, multiple layers of these networks, then multiple layers will, f will um, be joined together, for example, with these dot products. Okay, let's let's check it out what we are doing here. So um, we have A. I'll just copy it here. And we have C transposed. I'll copy it from there. And the first thing you'll notice is that even if you were trying to do this element-wise, it wouldn't work because the shapes don't match. But nevertheless, the shapes are perfect to apply the rule of, of a dot product because for the dot product, you need the following um, condition here. You need that the number of columns in the first matrix is identical to the number of rows in the second matrix. So this is the condition that you need to fulfill. And we can see that this is the case. This is both three here. So we can start the computation. And um, another interesting thing is that we can already predict the shape of the result because the result will be this size times this size. So this arrow, we have it here again, and this arrow, we have it here again. So two times two. What are we doing here? So in order to compute the first element on the top left, we actually need to do multiple multiplications and compute the sum of these uh, products. So what we do, first row, we select the first row here, and first column, we select the first column here. So we have these. And now we compute the vector dot product. So we take the first one here, multiply it with this one, so 3 times 1. We take the second one here, multiply it with this one, 5 times minus 1. We take the 2, multiply it with the 2, and then compute this. So it's 3 minus 5 plus 4 is 2. So this is the result here. And we now need to do this for all elements here. So for the second column, first row, which means we take the second column here and the first row here. And also for the second row, first column, second row, this is this one. And also the first column here, this one. And the last row and last column. So this one times this one. And once we did this, we will get this result over here. And this is how we can multiply matrices with the dot product.